What's going on, Jerome? Let's take a look at PFF Mike's three-round P- uh, Pro Football Focus mock draft. Now, this was right before uh, the Deshaun Watson trade went to uh, went down with the Browns and Houston, but whatever. We're, we're focused on the Minnesota Fighting Vikings. How are they going to suture up the secondary as well as the offensive line? Well, they do the damn thing uh, in this three-round mock draft. Here we go. <clears throat> Up at one, Hutchinson, yish. Uh, Lions at two. So, ooh, wild card, biatches. A sticky AK Kwanu going to the Lions. Him and Penny Sewell, long term. <sighs> Love it, man. Also, you can play uh, Icky inside if you want to. Uh, we can leave our friends behind. Three, uh, the Texans. Uh, maybe they move on from Tunsil, but Evan Neal is going to be that dude. Four, Jets, Thibodeau. So, it goes... Uh, two edges and two tackles in the top four. Uh, five, uh, the Giants first of their two, uh, excuse me, four Jets, uh, yeah, Thibodeau. Uh, five Giants first of their two first round picks. Uh, Charles Cross coming on Mississippi State. They need to protect whoever the hell is going to be quarterback. Six Panthers to break the seal on quarterbacks. Malik Wills from Liberty, 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 Liberty. Sam Darnold ain't working out. And now they turn the keys over to uh, Malik Willis where he's got the upside for sure. And you know, they're trying to save jobs in Carolina, Matt Rule and Fritter, but we'll see. Uh, I mean, Carolina, they didn't get Deshaun Watson. Now Malik Willis can be that athletic upside guy, and if he hits, if he pans out, I think that he could be legit in this league. Seven Giants, their second first-round pick uh, from the Bears. So Trevon Walker, who's really done a nice job during this draft uh, offseason, uh, really rising up boards. I think that he's going to be a monster with the Giants. Andre Patterson uh, getting his hands on him, getting some tutelage there like that eight speaking of guys rising up the falcons now the falcons could and should be in on quarterback especially if they do deal matt ryan which i think is a distinct possibility matt ryan to the colts question mark uh but jermaine johnson if they do keep matt ryan does make some sense maybe they could be in on kenny pickett but it just seems like atlanta's consistently been searching for uh premier pass rushers they haven't quite got it yet but uh, jermaine johnson the pride of eden prairie florida state will get there nine seahawks Kind of surprised that they're not going quarterback here, but Trevor Penning, where he is a, just a dude. Like, oh, yeah, uh, where Trevor Penning has a mean attitude. He's got a streak to him. I think that he, uh, well, Kyle Turley, adjacent uh, type player. Uh, I do like that one a lot. Ten, the stupid Jets taking Sauce Gardner. So the Jets get Gardner, who for me is cornerback one in this class, as well as they get Thibodeau. That's a nice little get, a nice little two for, for Rob Salah. Eleven, Washington. Now, they could be a non-quarterback, but Kyle Hamilton somehow just... Whew. Now, I, I you, you could almost toss a coin if the Jets go with Sauce Gardner or Kyle Hamilton, but the Washington football team, so they got land, uh, got rid of Landon Collins. Uh, Jamin Davis has been a stud uh, at safety. So now, I mean, Ron Rivera, since they got their quarterbacks checked, Carson Wentz, sure. Uh, 12, so the Vikings have a couple of options here. Uh, they still have Stingley on board. Trent McDuffie is on board. Linderbaum is on board. Uh, they got some great edge rushers on board as well. Uh, but they go with Trent McDuffie. For me, 5'11", Antoine Winfield Jr. Uh, he didn't test great, uh, but he I, I still think that he is an absolute uh, elite cornerback. I think that he just got it done for Washington. Him and Kyler Gordon were a great duo. And him coming in at Donatel's system, and the Vikings need some help at cornerback. They need some youth. Now, he doesn't have the length that you uh, ideally would like. More on that in, in a sec. But I think that he eventually can become a true blue alpha dog cornerback one uh, for the Vikings. So I like this one, uh, this pick a lot. I understand why they didn't go Stingley even though Durante Jones was LSU's DC last year. There's a lot of questions with health, uh, and there's a lot of questions about the last two seasons uh, with Stingley. So they go with the safer pick uh, in McDuffie. And we're just going to breeze the rest of this. Uh, Jameson. Actually, what did the Eagles do? All right, so the Eagles took Stingley, Devontae Wyatt, and then they also got the Greek Freak. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Kenny Pickett goes to the Steelers. Uh, Devin Lloyd goes to the Patriots. That's a perfect fit. Uh, Oja- oh, so this is also before Ojabo popped his Achilles, so he's probably out of the first round now, unfortunately. Boya Mafe to the Cowboys. Woo! Zion Johnson getting a ZJ with the Bills. Uh, let's see, Lusson. A Linderbaum falls all the way to the Dolphins. Uh, that's a hell of a that's a hell of a get, man. Especially uh, if they do sign uh, Armstead as well. Uh, that's a complete reboot on the Dolphins' offensive line. Uh, Traylon Burks uh, goes to the Lions into the second round. So Brees Hall goes to the Lions. Ooh, ooh, spicy. I, I like it. Nakobe. Wow. So the Jets they get Thibodeau, they get Sauce Gardner, and they get Nakobe Dean in the second round. What the heck, man? What the heck? I love that. Sam Howell goes to the Giants. Pretty solid pickup in the second round. Uh, Desmond Ritter goes to the Colts. Going to back up 
uh, whoever, or maybe they're just going to turn the keys over to Desmond Ritter. Uh, who knows in the simulation? The Browns getting Jahan Dotson to go along with Amari Cooper for Deshaun Watson. Makes sense. 46. Uh, Vikings pick up Roger McCreary out of Auburn, where he's an absolute stud. He held his own in the SEC. Uh, got you know got a lot of balls thrown his way, but really held up very nicely for the Auburn Tigers. Now McCreary also isn't a length specimen. Same thing with McDuffie. So the Vikings are sort of getting away from that Zimmer. Hey, like like uh, liking long lengthy corners, but just getting talented dudes who can cover people. I mean that's really uh, what the name of the game here is. Now they could have gone Kyler. And going back to back uh, UW cornerbacks, which I wouldn't have been mad at either. Uh, but I think uh, I think McCreary is a talent. I think he potentially even could sneak into the back end of the first round. Uh, so the Vikings starting things off where hey, I'm all about team BPA, uh, but sometimes best player available syncs up with uh, position of need and position uh, indeed. Where the Vikings now have McDuffie, they have McCreary, they have Dancer, they have Harrison Hand, they have Chris Boyd. So that's some nice. A nice uh, in the cornerback room. And then third round, uh, who are some other ones? Let's see, Brisker fell. Sky Moore works his way into the... Sky, uh, damn it, now Sky Moore is a Packer. Now I have to hate him with the Fury of a Thousand Suns. Christian Watson falls all the way to the Cardinals. And then round three, let's see, Justin Ross goes there. Wow, DeMarvin Leal. Uh, speaking of a guy who potentially could have been a high first-round pick, just sort of slid down uh, during draft season, is what it is. Jeremy, Tariq Woolen uh, falls to the third round. Uh, now, should the Vikings have taken Woolen? Just completely opposite of the spectrum in terms of length, cornerback. Uh, uh, but the Vikings at 77 get an uber athletic upside guard and Dylan Parham coming out of Memphis. Now, he's played a little bit of right tackle as well as right guard. I, I think that he could come in and potentially uh, work in at center. There's been some talk about him working in there. So now you have Dylan Parham as well as Wyatt Davis, two right guards who have had some experience at center. Maybe they both start. Just getting your best five out there because I think you obviously have your bookend tackles in Derisaw and Brian O'Neill. I, I think Ezra worked his way into uh, potentially securing up that left guard spot even with the new regime. I think he played well last year. So now you have the center and right guard spot open. I think Wyatt Davis was underrated last year. And now you throw in Dylan Parham. And do you check the box on the O-line? Is that done? I, I, I don't know. But I like the way that the Vikings operated here. I mean, they could have gone Ed Ingram, but I do like the upside of Parham just a little bit more. So, yeah, I, I like what the Vikings did here where, you know, PFF Mike, even though we're a team BPA, we definitely uh, got really good players at uh, at positions of need. So you got Parham on the inside, and then you got McCreary and McDuffie doing some things on in that cornerback room. So overall, I mean, if this is how it went down day one, day two for the draft and the Vikings, I would certainly be okay with that. But uh, let us know your thoughts on our thoughts. Vikings, uh, PFF three-round mock draft. PFF Mike, corner, corner guard, corner, corner guard. Ain't yeah, bad. Uh, let us know your thoughts on our thoughts, on his thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Must support the work. Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value.